Thanks. Hello. Hi, my name is Steve Hammond. I'm going to moderate tonight. And I hope you all enjoy Chapter Quick. This is Jason Clark right here. to introduce you, Jason. I, I want to talk about your credits, all the movies you've done, Mudbound, which was incredible. <laughs> all those, so many. This is extraordinary to do uh, Ted Kennedy and in this in this story, which has never been told on the screen before, which is remarkable to me, considering it was 49 years ago, and now it's finally come to the screen. So my first question is, why now? Why do you think now is the time it's right to tell us. Well, this is why. There's also, you know, Mark Chiari was prepared to finance it and make the movie. You know, um, uh, yeah, it's 50 years since Martin Luther King. It's 50 years since Bobby got shot. It's, you know, Ted's been you know passed away for quite a while. Um, we made the movie heading into an election year, so it could have gone another way. You know, the environment is coming out. It could have been a Democratic president. You know, would that change anything? I'm not sure. Um, but there was a willingness to make it. You know, there was you know, financiers that were ready to uh, put the money down that it would take. And then, you know, I, mean, I was obsessed by it. I wanted to make it. I wanted to play Ted. You did. When it came to you, was there any trepidation? You know, they're asking you to play an iconic figure in, certainly, in American life and, and Politics and everything. And yeah. That's no, I was terrified. I was really terrified. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, you know, it's the same as an actor when you approach Shakespeare or Chekhov or, you know, I mean, a part that truly scares you um, requires, you know, incredible dedication because you have to, you have to put in the work. And, and, um, uh, and you know, I knew that there's. I'm either going to be accepted as Ted or I'm not. If I'm not, the film is not going to work. It's such an intimate, you know, such an intimate uh, story and look at him and um, journey with him that uh, if we couldn't get it right, that if, I, if I wasn't believable moment to moment, um, you know, it would be a debacle. I can say, having seen it twice and saw it cold the first time, not knowing what it was except with the title, uh, when it was presented to me just before I saw it, uh, you come on screen and you go, uh, you sort of have that, okay, sort of prove it to me. And within two minutes, three minutes, I'm watching what I can totally buy as Ted Kennedy. And I don't think you're doing an impersonation. You're doing, thank you. <laughs> you're doing, you know, you're getting to the essence of him and you're totally into the story and, and, and you are, you are that guy. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, I mean, you know, post the film in the day, it's such an interesting time to pick up the man. And I was always struck, there was these, a series of photographs, Life Magazine did a series of photographs on Ted. It was, you know, I think it was, you know, a year on from Bobby's death, and then there were some beautiful photographs of him at Diana Sport. They were very melancholic, you know, cardigans, the house, winter rain. You know, he looked like a, you know, a man that really was, Having a hard time, um, and you know, and then we have, of course, this event and, and his choices and, and the repercussions of that. But it's you know, the first interview with John picks up the movie. We actually shot. I tell you, what, we shot it. I don't know if you want to tell you all, but we shot it a one minute, a ten minute one take, which was supposed to be the opening scene of me walking up, you know, in Washington. Coming out of the elevator, walking up the stairs, talking to babies, and you know, and then going into that interview. So you actually saw the space. It was a ten-minute shot that killed our steady cam operator. And that, you know, we do with one. So if anything happened, if somebody coughed or there's a move or somebody dropped something or I tripped or whatever, you know, let's do it again. You know, and our steady cam was actually throwing up because it was so. You know, it's up three big flights of stairs to Boston Public Library. Um, but then John, you know, he, he put that away and you start with this interview with a man and it's based on a real interview of Ted sitting down the day, you know, of, the, you know, when he flew to Iron Sport and um, he's talking about they taking off for the moon. Yeah. And, um, and I watched, you know, the pre-roll for the interview and I managed to get hold of that and you saw this man who, you know, just, just, just as you saw it in the film, just quiet, trying to, 
certain body size, certain type of care, or they needed to take care of before they were applying to sell, you know, uh, what was originally Jack's boat, the Victoria. <laughs> you know, yeah, so it's just, there's, there's, there's so much in this history that, that leads to this moment. Uh, yeah. And what's interesting too, how many people, I'm just curious in this audience, I'm going to ask this question, how many people were aware of the whole Chappaquiddick incident and all of that? Everybody. So they have come here to see this. They should get an audience. Yes. 49 years. How many people didn't know? Okay, right here in the front. Because they came in late. And they got the worst seats. Okay. <laughs> It's interesting to me because the screenwriters here did not know what Chappaquiddick was. Yeah. And they're from Dallas, and they were interested in the Kennedy legacy, and they explored it, and they stumbled onto this. Young screenwriters who wrote this incredible screenplay, you know, which is all based on facts. If you look it's based it up on Inquest, actually, it's based on, a lot of it is based on Inquest, it was held behind closed doors under oath, because they never made it to a grand jury. So what would I say to the five people that didn't know what chapter quick was? The, the importance of it right now, the relevance of this movie here in our world today. Well, I mean, look, there's, there's many things, and you know, we don't offer up one. A basic need to look at, you know, so Ted was, you know, the Kennedys are heroes of mine. I believe in their policies and their politics. Um, a need to separate the person from the politics and the policies, and a need to look at the people that we vote for honestly. You know, uh, what's and all, and and leave what we need to leave behind, and then learn from the past and march into the future. Yeah, and showing that, and and in your um, approach to the uh, role here too, did you do any kind of physical transformation and something that you felt you needed to do to put you into the role or be believable? Yeah, I mean, I had to get that accent right. I mean, that was the first one, and then their way of speaking. And you may not have noticed it's Australian. I think I've noticed something. Yeah, I mean, John and I talked about, you know, we, we never went full prosthetics or full, like, you know, was, apart from, you actually don't see it, but I actually did the whole full face prosthetics of the old Ted. You only see my eye. But I had, I had a fat suit on, I had, you know, the makeup was the guy that does Saturday Night Live. It was extraordinary, you know, like an eight hour job in a makeup chair. It was beautiful. It looked really good, but John didn't think we needed the whole thing, so we just had the eye. Um, but so we ended up going for a week. You know, Ted had great hair. He had thick, beautiful <laughs> hair that I'd, you know, I'd love to have. <laughs> um, and then the teeth were very important. That was John. You know, that was yeah, it was. It was his idea. Um, and we spent months with uh, K and B here in LA. Uh, you know, so to do making these teeth that, that I could slip on. You know, at first they were too big to give that Kennedy small. My teeth are very small and crooked, and we just, you know, just to get that, you know, so that you, it was just one little thing that you see. You only see Ted smile a few times in the movie, but it's really important that it's there when it does come out. And, uh, and that was a great process, because it, it took so much effort to get them thin enough so that I could speak without a lisp. That's what I was wondering, how you did yeah. that tricky accent for you. Yeah. Teeth yeah. stuck in your mouth. Yeah, there. Really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a for a long while there was a Ted, you know, with, with you know, teeth old, teeth old, teeth old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. <laughs> That's when I was very afraid. <laughs> Did you go to Chappaquiddick? Yeah, uh, actually, to yes. that bridge. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Was then? Is it the same thing? It's now? still pretty similar. I mean, the bridge itself has got new wood. You know, it's a little bit wider. It's got some rails that go on a little bit higher. And but there's still no markings as you go. It's, it's a dirt road. There's not many houses that are built being built or additions. There's no markings still. There's no um, gate or it's still on that angle. You know, as you come around it. Um, it's, you know, it's the edge of America. It's, it's, it literally is the edge of America. You have a small little bridge of a thin strip of land, and then the beach over there, and there's just nothing out there. There's, there's you know, the Atlantic. Um, and you dove in? I jumped in, yeah. yeah. Without, Without the cameras rolling? Without the cameras rolling at night in April? It was cold. <laughs> that, that's it's kind of scary cold. to me. It was scary. <laughs> The camera, the camera is actually a lot stronger than you see in the movie. When we shot in the tank in Mexico, we couldn't get the jets to uh, give the give the strength to show it. It was a very strong camera. You, you mentioned New Mexico. You you actually shot 
the underwater scenes and all of that yeah. stuff at where Titanic, Titanic was, was shot, in, yeah. which is huge. I mean, it takes a week to kill off. The famous Titanic tail, yeah. they call it. Yeah, yeah it goes down to 60 feet in, in a lot of parts. Yeah, it's huge. Wow. And I, we, didn't, we, we actually put the car, I went in the car upside down, and we went under um, you know, with a guy who to pull me out and went wrong. Um, but we actually, you can't see that one because we couldn't get, we couldn't get enough clarity with the camera with the bubbles and the water and that coming in and, and, and the night time and, and, and the lights. There is a small shot you can see my feet going out. But I tell you, that window was scary. I'm going at 4 a.m. in the morning. Wow. With just one diver in the water to pull me out if I don't get out. <laughs> yeah, my heart was beating. It was <laughs> <laughs> Having done all this and actually more than anybody else, you know, experiencing what perhaps happened that night, do you have theories and things and what what was going through his head and, and, and that situation he suddenly found himself in. This movie makes him out to be a very real human being. We don't, have our, we don't often see our leaders that way. Uh, yeah, I mean, in the end, uh, wow, so that's a cool question, Ben. Um, I guess in the end, the theories don't interest me. At the end, the heart is the decision Ted made. And that's all, I mean, you know, drunk, womanizing, you know. I would like to think that if it happened to me, I would, and I couldn't say the guy, I would run to the nearest house, which was 50 meters away, and I would say, wake up, wake up, call the police. Maybe I wouldn't, I don't know. So there's those, those young boys who were on that train in Paris, you know? Yeah. And they even, he, I thought what well, he said was remarkable, you know, I, I ran into the guy with the collision pop. Would I do it again? I'm not sure. You know, but, but you know, it's just one of those things. He did run, and, and he obviously thought he was going to die, but he did it. And you don't know until it happens. So, that, but I would hope I would run to the house and, and do the best I could to, to, you know, save a woman that only was in the car. Um, well, that's the heart of it. He says at the end, one of, you know, one of my favourite lines is, you know, Moses betrayed, you know, Moses had a temper, Peter betrayed Jesus. I am Jack Quick. You know, there's an acceptance of it. Yeah. And he did say in his book that it, you know, it stayed with him and wanted him for the rest of his life. I've got to ask you about that scene, that speech that you do, um, when he speaks to the people, uh, national audience, not just Massachusetts. Yeah. Was that word for word? Did you take that um, from No, they speech? cut a few things out. It's a very long speech. It's about it. 10 minutes speech. You can watch it on YouTube. I mean, I didn't know it's, it's on YouTube. It's, it's um, yeah, watch it. So, you think of me doing, you know, so I actually did learn it. <laughs> no, the whole geez. speech. I learned that whole <laughs> speech so many times. <laughs> I read it. I learned that whole speech so many times. Um, it's a remarkable piece of thought. It's a remarkable performance of considering it was live. Everything's on the line. It's a remarkable piece of justification. I mean, even right at the very end, I mean, I was upset with some of the lines that John and the writers wanted in there, but I said, you guys have got to put this in, there's so much you've got to put in there. I mean, you know, he quotes Jack and well, Jack's book of moral courage. Yeah. You know, um, you know, and he, you know, you go back to what he said, when he quoted Bobby speech at, 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 at the funeral, or is it, you know, in the end, history will, you know, we will, history will get us all, we will one day surely judge ourselves. Um, there's, there's a level of consciousness in Ted and acceptance that I found in, in what he was doing and what he was asking. I mean, he says, oh, I, ask, you know, I ask you to, I ask your prayers and your thoughts, and in the end, the decision will be mine. So, I mean, in a way, he's acknowledging that the speech is pointless. I'm going to make my own mind up. So, it's an appeal to, you know, there's so much, I mean, it's, I guess there's so much drama, I think. It was so interesting, though, I thought John Curran who's the director of this movie, has done an incredible job in building it as a suspense thriller, even though you think you know how it ended. You don't really know. And you watch that, even that speech, which way is he, he going to go? You know, the well, end yeah, of, but I guess in that way, it becomes we the people. In, in the end, ultimately, it's, I mean, as, as, a, as a viewer of this film, I've not seen it a few times, but as a viewer, it's not just about Ted. And I guess that is the relevance yeah. of what you say, why now? You know, um, Somebody can only get away with what they can get away with. That's why we have the rule of law. Good, bad, 
politicize, kick it around, whatever we want to do with it, if we want to do a lot with law. But, you know, and so I, that ultimately is where it rests. How do we feel? Yeah. You know, literally. Um, and, and in doing that, it's, it's extraordinary. Now, we're going to find out, because it's always interesting to see what an audience watches. So you're the, one of the very first audiences to see this film. So let's see what you thought. If you've got any uh, questions, yes, you do right there. I'm going to call on 